Well, that was a pretty fun match to watch. Uh, how much time do we have left in this round? Looks like 28 minutes remaining. Correct. We have less than 28 minutes left. Like seeing some gore master. Right. Do we have any matches still up and running? My cat is freaking out over there. Let's see. <coughs> Entirely possible that Hacky is still going. Yeah, Hack Hacky's match is still going. If we want to show that one. I mean, load it back up. Let's take a look. Let's see if the Extinction Jovial Pippet Rage Fire Azawa Phil Gabe Centos Inquisitor Pack Raptor Living Totem deck can make it. <laughs> so many powerful cards. All alternate art too. <laughs> he was telling me when he was making that hand guard that it only took him like two draws or something like that to get the hand that way. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh. And we're live. Yeah, so a couple of solitary exiles getting rid of things on Hacky's side of the board. As we are well aware, Hacky does have some nasty things that you might want to put into that box. Hacky on two health. Uh, Pack to Pain, not so good for him here. Uh, just kind of dead on the board. He's got eight cards in hand, seven now. Does he have something to do with those ten actions, those ten resources? Wow. I have to imagine he would play them if he did. How does he have... I mean, like, maybe he just can't win yet, so he's, like, waiting for a Heart of Fire, because maybe Heart of Fire into actions is enough to win for him here. Uh... Stormchild on the other side of the table, five resources, 14 health, and Dimmit's charge power. Dimmit is probably the single last champion that Hacky's deck wants to play against. In case you're just watching this for the first time, or this is like a YouTube video and you're just getting here, we've seen Hacky a couple of times through the tournament, and he's running a blood ruby uh, damaging action deck. I don't think he has any troops, he just chooses to deal damage to his opponent and should we just call it blood ruby burn blood ruby burn yeah that's that works i you know i was just explaining it even in terms that like somebody just in hex would know is the sure well there's burn in hex yeah no there's burn in hex like not not that they wouldn't know what burn is but like the the whole idea of the deck is kind of unique uh extinction for a living totem get out of here living totem i don't know what kind of stuff you're selling but i don't want none Oh, now Chaos Key can void a void box, but just before it goes to the void, the void box spits out whatever was inside of it, which in Hacky's case is the Heart of Fire. So if I had to guess, Stormchild has exactly one turn to either deal with Heart of Fire or those five cards left in Hacky's hand are going to do something to this board. Yeah, I, either Hacky's got to have all removal, or he just needed that one heart of fire to come back so he would have the the win. You know, like yeah. So Stormchild not playing anything. Uh, Blood Diamond's most powerful card in this situation is either Blinding Light, Stone Skin, or Curse of Oblivion. Yeah, we've seen Blinding Light do some good work in, in some of Neo's matches as well. Oh. And it would be good here if he has it. Oh. And in a kind of interesting turn of events here, Hacky passes off the turn. So there's that Killipede. That Killipede. Now, Hacky used an extinction on a single a single living totem. Uh, right. Granted, that living totem would have killed him, but you would think that murder would be the option in most cases there. Uh, he finds another shard. <laughs> oh! Well, actually, this Z is interesting. Zared's charge power, power is enough here. That's right. <laughs> well, jerk, we jerk, think it's enough. Jerk face Zared to the rescue. <coughs> It's yeah. possible Stormchild might have, like, like, a way to pump up the attack power of the Gillipede here. Yeah. 
Like, you might have the Cog to Petal Thirst here, possibly. Seems like a card you would play with. Maybe. Although, probably not. We would have chosen Blood there. Yeah, exactly. I think you probably choose Blood there just to represent Cog to Petal Thirst. Unless you're playing, like, Noble Heart in there somewhere. Um, neither player playing anything. So what does Stormchild have that he doesn't want to put on the board? And Hacky at 14 resources. He's getting to the point where he doesn't even need the Heart of Fire. That's true. Does not even need the Heart of Fire anymore. Could potentially use Life Siphon or Burn to the Ground all on their own Zs here. There's the Living Totem, though. Kind of frightening. Still five cards in Hacky's hand. Yeah, imagine, but he's got to just Imagine have if Living Totem could, could pay three for speed. That would be really good right here. No. That would be really nice. But I'm assuming Hacky's probably got... Uh oh, that was that was some sort of grin when he played that shard. He's thinking about it, so maybe not. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, you can see, you see a plus. <laughs> you counter. can see the plus arrow. That's see the plus. That's scary. Maybe he's gonna burn that living totem for fifty. Oh man. He says, "Do you have it?" And he does. He's got blinding light. Wow. Now, Hacky saved a resource. Does he still have a burn up? He oh, burn -up. that's a solid play. Um, good play by Hacky there. Uh, either he dealt almost lethal damage and burned his opponent out, or. Or the burn was enough. I think Stormchild actually could have benefited by looking at the board state, realizing he was only going to get hit by 13, and realizing what was going to happen. That might have been a misplay on Stormchild's effect, but I'm not sure if that's the case. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do see what you're saying. He could wait the one more turn. Yeah, like you, the, just, the you just go down to one. Right. And then if Hecky has a way to kill you past that, you just accept it. Like you blinding light the burn, and then he needs another action. But like it's at that point, if you let if you let that go through, then you're just dead to it. like literally anything, like the stiff breeze, right? Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, Hacky's dead to that living totem. All you have to do is pre prevent it. So now Hacky is at 16 shards, and he's drawn 32 cards out of his deck. Yeah. So half of his draws have been shards. That's well, really low on gas. I think he's playing Ragefire too, so it's not definitely that it's quite that ratio. Although, yeah, if he drew that many Ragefires, he probably would have his opponent dead already. Yeah. That being said, another shard will give him the ability to Zerid that Killipede. So there is that. Uh, potentially wants a shard here. Hard to tell if he has another way to get things off the board. Stormchild staying at three resources could have another blinding light. Oh no, is this it? Looks like we're going for it. He's going for it. So burn for 14. Oh, and Stormchild says good game. And there it is. <laughs> The big X damage for the win. Yeah. You know, the other funny thing is that Killipede didn't represent lethal. You know? <laughs> That's like, true. Despite Hacky being on two health, which is right. the health that you generally just associate with being dead to anything. That's true. The Killipede did not have Hacky Toxified. Didn't have him toxified. He was at two. Yeah. Yep. Could have survived. Could have survived. Yeah. Looks like that is the end of that one. But that was that was a pretty Hacky fun was, to that game there too. 
Hacky was 100% going to come and help us cast. He was so set on it as soon as he went X and 2. I think he's just having too much fun with this deck. <laughs> I mean, this deck is sweet. Yeah, I don't blame him. He looks awesome to play. Yeah. And he's with us with, in spirit anyway, because we've shown him several times now, too, anyway. The other thing is, now that I think about it, JJ, if if that 13 damage from the first burn to the ground hit, uh, hit him in the face, right? Yep. Okay. That leaves Haki with one resource in Blood, Blood Ruby, Ruby, which yep. there's only three or four one drops in the game in those shards. Never right. mind ones that you would expect to see in Hacky's deck. So I, I think taking the 13, like I think that Blinding Light was just a snap reaction, probably didn't even look at uh, uh, he probably just didn't look at how many resources were being played and thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to get I'm, I'm going to get killed? No way. Blinding Light. Yeah. Saw that one yeah. remaining resource and was like, no. Slow like, motion. If the opponent didn't have enough resources to, to both uh, play Blinding Light and Pump Totem. So if you're taking that line, then you end up forcing yourself into next turn just doing, like, like presumably the life drain on the Totem or the, or the Pump. Uh, no, it'd have to be the Pump because you're playing around the burn because you yeah. have Hacky dead. Um, if Hacky goes for the burn on his turn, then he does still have the Blinding Light to save himself on his next turn as well, too. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think he's actually could have just won the game if he had just attacked there instead. Yep. Yep. A little bit non-intuitive, but, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I think, like, the only way... Because, like, I let you take me to one assuming in our, one of our HDO games, assuming there was no way you could push one damage through. But that was a mistake because you had... Even though I had counters and verdicts, you had an arena regular and a shard. Right. And but in this case, Hacky only had one resource. There's there are a hundred things you can do with four to three to five resources, you know, anywhere in that range. There's right. only a couple you can do on There's a very small number when you've only got one. Yep. Especially when you have lethal on board on the crack back. Stormchild mulling to five. Uh, just showing off a very strong problem with the current mulligan system. Uh, because no matter what hack he had, I'm sure he'd keep it on. He's on the draw opponent playing, you know, mulling to five. Well, mull to five, I usually keep more hands, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, two shards becomes three in there. Although it's so gratifying when you do have to mulligan low and still win the game anyway. Those are always fun games to win. And frustrating for the opponent. Cyrus, if you can hear this, Enma's finally responded to you in chat. Do we have any other codes to hang around for? Is it worth hanging around after the tournament? We will do a little bit of talking after the tournament, and then I have... I have a couple of giveaways after that, so if you guys want to hang around, that's cool, but I'm not going to force you to. It's nothing, like, super special. It's a couple of packs and stuff, so. Yeah, I think they just want to know if they should have the redeem code ready to go. So that people can race for it. <laughs> So here comes a Chaos Key from Hacky. Very early, but he probably has nothing else to do here, so the Chaos Key seems strong. Probably the strongest card we've seen in all these matchups from Hacky has been this Chaos Key. You know what I mean? Well, you said you were going AFK in chat, and I didn't see that. But, uh, yeah. For those of you watching, I think this Chaos Key has done more work for Hacky than any other card in the matches we've seen. 
can you get into the top 32 with five wins and three losses? You would have to ask people more mathematically inclined than I. It's possible, I think. So considering Hacky's deck, do you would you put Chaos Key in the main deck, or would you have that in the reserves? Uh, I think, I think in the games. current meta, I think in the current meta reserves, because I would have been expecting Gorfis coming in. But since Hacky and most of the field is like there are more soul marbles on this board lately than anything else, I would definitely run it main. So it really depends on whether or not I was expecting a bunch of soul marbles. So Hacky with one Heart of Fire. A second Heart of Fire really turns this deck from crazy into crazier, you know? Like it turns a burn into not just one resource net gain, it turns it into three resource net gain. Um, it, makes, it makes it so you can use burn to the ground or life siphon for profit in resources. That's, that's insane. So the second Heart of Fire is actually better for Hacky than I originally thought. That alternate art pack raptor did do the most work, I agree. So he's going to soul marble the Chaos Key because he knows that Hacky would just void either the marble or the solitary exile depending on what he needed. So, Stormchild, when he finishes this Soul Marble, I think he finishes it and turns it into a Soul Cavalry just to get himself the life gain with Dimid. I would agree with that. I don't... It's also protected from Chaos Key at that point, which seems like maybe Hacky has Extinction in his hand somewhere, but you can't really bank on that here. Like, you have to, you have to get a couple pieces of health where you can because that health puts huge sets of distance between you and Hacky here. Completely agreed, and I don't see Stormchild with too many uh, troops in general. So uh, the chances of him drawing into a troop, I feel, is pretty low. But of course I can't tell without looking at his deck list. Armaments would certainly be greedy here, thinking about it. I think it's got to be, got to be the cavalry. So he does put, play out the cavalry and does use the demids charge fire right away, yeah. Yeah, but Hacky's still in a okay position. And yep, there's that uh, extinction in response. Yeah. 
So, punished a little bit for that soul cavalry, but he's had a lot to do with his resources. And now that chaos key is interesting because he doesn't want to get rid of the solitary exile. All that's behind that solitary exile is another uh, chaos key. Uh, but definitely with it out now, he has a very good response against uh, another Soul Marvel if Stormchild plays it. Uh oh. Drown Shrine of Uth Ulthar will stop Hacky's Pact of Pain from getting him anything down the line if he gets there. What, what is Haki doing? He's just... I guess he just doesn't have resources to... So he's just doing this to do it. <laughs> he, he, he seems pretty pleased with himself there. <laughs> so maybe that was just... I don't have resources, so I'll do this. <laughs> uh... So Stormchild does play out a Frost Wizard. I guess this is very much in response to Ragefire. I th yeah, no reason not to bring it in against Ragefire here. Also, it provides a quicker attack. Like, every point of damage here against Hacky is important. Yeah, and Frost Wizard is not bad as a two drop. A little odd that Hacky's choosing not to use uh, Zared's power or any action here. Although I suppose not much to play around here aside from Blinding Light. Well, there, there is the threat of uh, Killipedes from the previous game, so Zerid's uh, charge power is a very good counter to that. So a lot of a lot of resources on both sides of the field. Uh, Stormchild actually doing pretty good to have seven resources and three cards in hand here, considering the early mull. That's scary. That's a Tianost. Tianost is a five-five dragon for six. If that deals damage to an opposing champion, you get to void a card off of the board, and all copies of that card from opposing champions' decks. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that also means your own your own stuff if your opponent has nothing. So Hacky could just Chaos Key his Heart of Fire, and then Tianos can't swing. Well, it can swing, but then it'll have to get rid of the Drowned Shrine. Not a good play, but a play he has. Well, I guess you can extend it by then the following turn himself, maybe? Maybe? That is definitely going to eat the Zerid charge power here. Yes, and Hacky does play the Zerd Charge Power, giving minus one, minus one to the Zentroth Inquisitor. Yeah, that will go back to Stormchild's hand, but it's going to be useless. 
Uh, should be worth noting at this point that you basically count Stormshot's hand as minus one because, you know, that's the way. So Stormchild does play uh, Soul Marble out now, completely safe from any, at least any known Chaos Keys. But looking at time, uh, time left in round 7 is less than 3 minutes right now, so the game we're watching may be going to turns. The storm trial putting uh, six counters on this soul marble. So with the drowned shrine out, um, if it goes into storm child's turn, he's freely able to yeah freely able to make a uh, soul cavalry out of that. Yeah. And on top of that, he just uh, top decked an Angel of Dawn, and it comes into play for free. So he's in a very good position right now. So it looks like this is getting close to time. Hacky is going to take six here. I'm not too sure what he can do to come back. He can definitely stabilize with extinction. If he has extinction here. There's that extinction. That clears the board. They are going to go to five turns here pretty soon. And it's a matter of can Hacky defeat Stormchild or can Stormchild take that last eight health? Time is up. Attention all players. Time is up. All right, so that is it for round seven. Players, please go to turns. All right, so everyone go to turns. You have five turns starting on your opponent's next turn or whoever, like after you pass your opponent. Whoever's turn it is right now. The next one is turn one, then turn two, then turn two, three, so forth and so forth. So there are still four rounds going before we get into the last one. Guys, please let us know how those games are going in chat if you can spare a second to quickly type in and be like, hey, things are going. So it doesn't seem likely that... I, pro probably the best shot would be if Hacky had three X actions and drops a shard this next turn. Yeah, that's 12... Well, that's a rage fire, so that's not an <laughs> X action. Uh, so Hacky's using that rage fire here. That blinding light slows things down pretty quickly. 
three cards in Hacky's hand, he would have to do something crazy here. Yeah, we know that Stormchild basically has nothing left at this point, whatever he's just top decking here. But I believe if we if we're watching correctly, this is the last turn here, right? Yeah, I mean they they've been going through their turns pretty quick. This will be a draw. Uh, there's no way. Like I mean, Hacky, even if Hacky can win this turn, which I don't think he can, or he, you know, that'd be insane. Yeah, definitely not with the chaos key. Oh, this is now turn three. The chat is saying. Okay, I, I that's fair. Okay. But that's the thing is that they're trying to say that to Hacky, but Hacky's like forty seconds ahead of them, right? <clears throat> yeah. So Twitch delay is uh, typically somewhere between ten to fifty seconds ahead. Yep, yeah, I got you. Fair enough. Looks like some friendly banter there. But without the Heart of Fire, it seems pretty unlikely that Hecky's going to be able to do anything else here anyway. Yeah. That's also a, turn. That was also a pretty confident statement from Stormchild there, saying it's pretty sure it's a draw. So, I think Hecky just said out loud that he has two burns and an extinction left in hand. So no draw in the game is good enough here, unless it was like deal X damage, draw that many cards as well. <laughs> that's a good, good card. card I'd like that card yeah I'd love that card life siphon but cards instead of health yeah. great <laughs> so that's pretty good let's close that down guys